Continuamos con el siguiente asunto en la agenda de esta cumbre, como decíamos, la ecoinnovación y la manera en que la Unión Europea quiere establecer el orden de prioridades. El encargado de explicarlo en profundidad es Pavel Misiga, responsable de la Unidad de Economía Circular y Sistemas de Base Biológica de la Comisión Europea. Es duto paquetara etortzeko modurik izan, baina bertan egon nahi izan du, eta beraz, bideo hau bidali digu, raintxe ikusiko dezuena. Good morning. My name is Pavel Misiga and I am the head of Circular Economy and Biobay Systems Unit in Directorate General for Research and Innovation of the European Commission. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation to participate in Basque Circular Economy Summit uh, 2022. It is my pleasure to share with you some reflections about the circular economy transition in the European Union. First, let's look at the current situation in the transition to circular economy. Unfortunately, the picture is not very positive. Europe uses 8 gigatons of materials each year and only about 10% is used in a circular way. The rest of economy is linear. Circular economy is a niche and our material consumption continues to be unsustainable causing pollution, degradation of natural ecosystems and contributing significantly to climate change. It is quite surprising because we know that many viable uh, circular uh, economy technologies exist, but they are not taken up by the market. What is clearer is that much more profound disruptive change is needed for the transition process. That includes changes in, in business models, in governance, as well in social norm and human behavior. On this slide, I would like to present a model of circular economy transition. What we want to see is the change of economic regime, the middle part on, on the picture a change from linear to partially circular to fully circular economy, a change from the current situation that is defined by linear value chains, by the absence of information on uh, materials and performance of products and circularity aspects, and by missing collaboration between economic actors, upstream and downstream of uh, value chains. And where we want to go is the new regime with circular business models dominating with value chains completely circular and populated with uh, information on materials and environmental performance of, of products. Uh, and Another important thing that is necessary is collaboration of economic actors along value chain. So, because they depend on each other for circular solutions. This process of change is, however, very much influenced by other factors. For example, by the landscape, uh, which is defined by societal institutions, by policies, regulation, market organizations, as well as behavior of organizations and individuals by social norms. On the other hand, the other important factor is the existence of experimentation and development of solutions. And turning these solutions, uh, ex experimental solutions and innovation into, into normal market uh, activities. And, uh, replication of uh, innovative solutions. It is positive to see that the landscape is changing in Europe and hopefully this will accelerate the transition. For example, in the field of policy and regulation, the policy framework becomes more comprehensive, more complete and hopefully more effective. Starting with the EU Green Deal, 
circular economy action plan, product policy framework, uh, sectoral strategies and uh, product and waste legislation. For example, the, the product policy framework introduces new strong instruments like the eco design regulation or product passport that will um, oblige uh, producers to introduce circular economy element and information uh, or the new uh, packaging and packaging waste regulation that will be adopted in a few days will introduce mandatory secondary material content in packaging materials which will very likely drive demand for recycled materials. Also in the field of governance we see a lot of progress. Many government institutions introduce their internal policies on purchasing sustainable products, for example through green public procurement policies. The infrastructure is improved. The, there has been a lot of public and very often private investment in the circular economy infrastructure like recycling centers, repair shops, etc. So this may have an enabling effect on many circular economy activities. Also there is fast development of technologies but also uh, increased awareness and improved knowledge and, and skills which are also absolutely necessary conditions for uh, replication of circular economy solutions. Uh, in the field of investment we see a lot of interest by public and many private investors uh, to find sustainable investment opportunities. And there is a new framework on sustainable finance that uh, provides clear criteria what sustainable investment is and what is not. Where the, the situation is more ambiguous is um, the social norms and changes in behavior. We can see growing awareness um, of businesses and by citizens and consumers of circular economy aspects. The question is whether this is enough to trigger a change. Another factor is uh, how fast the circular economy activities that are currently niche can turn into norm, can become dominant activities. Uh, it is important to realize that circular economy transition is inherently an innovation process. And what is needed here is much more experiments and demonstrations to reach a critical mass of successful uh, experimentations and demonstrations that will show that these solutions are economically viable and socially acceptable or even demanded by society. So the question is how we can accelerate this experimentation and demonstration and, and stimulate market replication, how we can multiply these activities. And there a lot still uh, should be done. For example, what is needed is more public support to innovation projects in form of grants and incentives it is important to um, uh, run demonstrations at different levels and different scales, at local, regional, national and EU scale. It is important uh, that this innovation support activities not only look at uh, early uh, stages on, and, and uh, low technology readiness level, basic research or, or early uh, innovation stages, but it is necessary to support also high technology readiness level, uh, which means mature technological solutions that are close to uh, the market. And it is also important not only focus on technology solutions, but a broader innovation, business solutions, uh, 
governance innovation and social innovation. And when we understand circular economy transition as innovation process, then we can see an important role for innovation policy and innovation funding. And it is actually happening. Horizon uh, 2020, which was the European research program for the period 2014 and 2020, already invested some 2 to 3 billion euro in circular economy projects. And the current program, Horizon Europe, for the period 2021 to 2027, will likely invest almost twice as much in two thematic clusters, thematic cluster 4 for industry and thematic cluster 6 for environment. And it will focus very much on large-scale demonstration and public, private, uh, RNI partnerships and thematic initiatives, for example, Circular Bio-Based Europe Joint Undertaking, which is a 2 billion instrument uh, to support the development of bio-based solutions, or, for example, Circular Cities and Regions Initiative, which is an initiative that initially earmarked about 250 million euro for demonstration projects at local and regional scale for, for systemic circular economy innovation. In this context, I would like to invite participants of this conference to look at Horizon Europe work program for the period 2023 and 2024 that will be published within a few days to look for the opportunities for funding and collaboration. The information days where the program will be presented to potential uh, interested parties, to potential project sponsors. The information days will be held on the 13th and the 14th of December. So please look at the work program and participate and use this uh, opportunity. Thank you for your attention. If you have any question, please don't hesitate to contact me at the uh, email address you can see on the slide. I wish you all a very good and productive meeting. Bye-bye.